Hello everyone, my name is John Bussart. I'm an HPE Solution Center Engineer for Ingram Micro. I support servers, blade systems, storage, as well as networking technology solutions from HPE. In my videos, what I like to do is show you a slide from a popular PowerPoint and explain to you what that means within a management interface. Today we're going to continue our conversation with HPE's OneView and how it works in conjunction with blade systems that utilize virtual connect technology. So if you're a little bit new to OneView and you don't understand the server profile concept, I would recommend looking at my, my last video on OneView that gives a generic overview on OneView as well as the server profile concept. We're going to extend that knowledge um, and, and add on um, the concepts of Virtual Connect into that as well. If you don't know what Virtual Connect is, let me give you a quick primer on that. So in an infrastructure, I'm certainly a big proponent of boot from shared storage technologies. Um, Virtual Connect can be used in a variety of ways, but I find it easy to kind of explain the technology if, if I do it in this aspect. So I don't like any island of resources to exist within an environment. I like the, my data to be movable, flexible, and dynamic. If I have local hard drives on a system, right, that represents an island of resource because that's where my application as well as my operating system lives. Right, my data could be on shared storage, but if that server still fails and, and doesn't boot back up, in order for me to be able to reassign that data to another system, right, I'm going to have to install an operating system as well as the application. Right? I know a lot of people like to boot their hypervisors, such as VMware, off SD cards and USB cards. Right? So you could certainly do that, but I still think it represents an island of resource that kind of exists. Certainly if that system fails and goes away, I, it's very quick to reinstall VMware on another host or your hypervisor on another host. Right? But the ongoing configuration, what you have to do after that installation, takes a considerable amount of time. Virtual Connect comes in and tries to solve that problem. Now, if I have a rack full of servers, right? And they're all configured at the same time with the same part numbers, but they don't have any internal drives. Right? What makes any one server any different than any other? Well, there's these little things called MAC addresses and worldwide names. You can, if you don't know what those are, you can kind of think about them like the VIN number for your car. It's a unique number that identifies your automobile. In a virtualized environment, in, in a... Uh, in a um, uh, a server environment, right? MAC addresses and worldwide names are unique identifiers for your your network adapters as well as your fiber channel adapters. So if I have a rack full of servers, they're all configured with the same part number, and a server fails running an application, I just can't necessarily pull out the cables and plug them into another system and expect that application to come back up. I'll actually have to reconfigure my storage network to allow access to the data and. And then once the system booted up, it would realize that all the network adapters were new and then it would reinitialize them and I'd have to actually go in and reconfigure all those network adapters within the operating system or the hypervisor. So Virtual Connect goes and virtualizes the worldwide names and MAC addresses and kind of creates a, a virtual cable strategy, a software-defined cabling strategy within your data center. So if a server fails through a software-defined component, I can go in and reallocate those resources to another blade server, power it on, and the entire world would think it was the exact same system because it had the same worldwide names as well as MAC addresses. Right. Over time, Virtual Connect has, has, has enhanced its capabilities. It's been around for a long time. Um, they have the ability to take 10 gig as well as 20 gig network connections and carve them up into four unique devices, almost at a physical level. So a 10 gig adapter could be carved out into 10 network adapters if I felt like it. And each one of these blade servers comes with two of these adapters, giving me a total of eight devices. Most recently, what they've done is they've actually um, allowed you to be able to use one of those four devices per adapter and use it as a fiber channel connection to be able to connect into your shared storage technology. Right, so that's a lot of information to give you all at once. If you hung with me so far, I think my demonstration is actually going to clear this up a little bit more for you. So let's, let's take a look at this, this technology within the interface. Okay, here's my one view. Let me log in. And we're going to go over to our server profiles.
Let's extend that out a little bit. Let's look at this this server profile here, and it's associated to this bay, this blade server here, which if I look at the onboard administrator, that will be this blade server right here. Now real quickly, I can tell that this blade server has a virtual connect profile associated to it, or has its virtual cables associated to it, because it doesn't have this, this I associated with it. So let's go in and edit this profile and take a closer look. Obviously, I can do things that are, are typical with um, uh, server profiles within one view, such as managing the firmware. But I also get this connection settings. So again, this Blade server only has two 10 gig connections, and I've carved them out into one, two, three, four, five. And if I scroll down a little further, we'll see the sixth one. All right, so I've carved it out into six connections. All right, and then four of them are Ethernet connections, and then two of them are fiber channel connections. And these are its virtual worldwide names as well as MAC addresses. It's easy to create these carvings. Right? I've got six of them, so I can have a total of eight for two 10 gig adapters. So I can go down here, click add a connection. In this case, select the network. I could change the bandwidth and click add. And then once the server rebooted, it would get its virtualized MAC address and it would be assigned to the system. All right, so I got six connections inside my environment. What does that look like within the operating system? So let's click cancel down here. Let's go over here and let's launch a console into this operating system. And then we'll go and look at device manager. All right, and we'll expand out network adapters. And we'll see one, two, three, four network adapters. And then if I go down to storage controllers, we'll see two fiber channel adapters listed here. So those are all six of those devices. So almost at a physical layer, I've carved out my two 10 gig adapters to be six different devices within my environment. And I can go up to eight. All right, again, all these blade systems that I have within this environment are booting from shared storage. What I'm going to do is create a, a, a quick notepad document. I'm going to just call it our data. Because I'm booting from shared storage, I can do interesting things. Now, let's say that this blade server fails. Now, I'm going to speed this video along a little bit because I want to keep this kind of the, the video itself within a certain time frame. I don't want to make it very long. So, so to get an accurate representation of time, I would look down at, at the time down below here. All right? But anyway, any rate, well, let's say that, that this system failed. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to press and hold the system and bring it down. All right. All right. And to remind ourselves, let's look back here. That would be this system. Again, we'll say that system has failed. Now I want to reassign that resource to another compute module, another Blade Server module. So I can do that pretty easily. All I got to do is go over, click Edit, and change it from Bay 1 to Bay 3. And then I'm going to click OK. Now that it's been applied, what I'm going to do is go over here and power on this system. Right. You can also look over here and see that now this system has an eye on it, and this system is powered up and it no longer has its eye. Now we'll go over here, we'll launch the console to this system, and begin to watch this system boot up. So the system will boot up a couple times. It'll boot up once to get its bio settings, then I'll reboot again to get its virtual connect settings, that is its worldwide names and virtualized MAC addresses, and then it'll go again and boot up into the operating system. So it generally takes about 15 minutes or so for, for that to be able to happen, but you will see it, it will come up um, as it's uh, uh, the same system. So I could have 
pulled the system from test and dev. We'll say my production system failed for whatever reason or another. I could turn to test and dev and say, hey, I know what you're working on is very important, but I need to park what you're doing, right? And then use your blade server to be able to provide my production data. Right? So I have the ability, you know, once I fix the original blade to be able to reassign that to another resource. So for example, down here, I have this blade server. It happens to be a hypervisor and it's not assigned. I can go in and actually assign this guy to a blade server. So I'll assign this to bay 10. That'll be this bay here. If you notice, it's got the, the eye on it saying it doesn't have any virtual cables strapped to it. And then we'll click OK. okay and then we'll go over. We'll power this system on. And then we'll launch the console. I'll watch this guy start up. We'll get both of them going here. And if we go back here, we look at the onboard administrator. We'll see now that this system has a profile associated to it and it doesn't have the eye. Okay, let's go back over to the interface. So these concepts of portability, being able to take applications and move them between different parts of compute resources within an enclosure, um, allows us to be able to, to reallocate what we need based on what's driving business. When HP talks about composability, these are some of the intro concepts um, that define that, that technology solution. All right, so let's go back over here. So a little bit of time has passed. Right, let's take a look. You can see that this system's up and running. So let's log in and see it is indeed the same system. So there's that data file that we've created. Let's go into Device Manager. We could see that we got the same network adapters as well as storage controllers. And if we dug in, we'd see that they have the same worldwide names as well as MAC addresses. If I go over here and look at this system here, you can see that it's starting its boot of a VMware environment. So this is some of the capabilities with found within HP OneView in conjunction with virtual connect and server profiles. I hope you found this video informative and please stay tuned for more videos.